So staying warm in the winter in a boat like this with no diesel heater or one utility heater, be, the size of this boat, this is a 55 foot boat. Look at that breaker panel. So, there is one 20 amp breaker for all the plugs. And there's one breaker for the wash machine. So it's on a separate breaker. So it's another 20 amp. If you plug two utility heaters in, in it, it kicks the 50 amp breaker because the old 50 amp breaker is old, can't handle it. And you can't put two utility heaters on one 20 amp circuit. Even if you had two utility heaters, you couldn't keep this boat warm. So what we've done is we've been using this. We went and bought this kerosene heater. It takes, it uses about this one tank. If you fill that tank, well, one five gallon bucket, one like this. If you run it, for two days straight, it'll use one of these. So two 24 hour periods. And this costs about 20 bucks to fill up now. It's like four bucks, 450 a gallon. But you know, you're not using that thing all the time. You're not using it all the time. We spent on the coldest months in Delaware about 200 bucks for using the kerosene. So the, one of the things you have to do is you have to have set this thing next to the companion light because you've, it's got a vent. You, it's not kicking off carbon monoxide, but it's just, it's kerosene, it's burning, you've got a vent it. So you have to have somewhere where you can crack and get, some, get it to where it vents out, or it, it's kind of stinky. And then it'll also, do you guys see the difference in the color of the ceiling? So I cleaned this with, with Comet. So if you have any of these and you want to take them down, just get some Comet and clean them with Comet, then wipe them down with Windex or whatever you, uh, you know, or whatever, after and rinse them off. But look at the black. There, the whole, the whole ceiling of the whole boat is, is uh, black. So at some point you gotta go and clean them all off again. So this is the breaker box. So there's DC volts on this side, AC volts on this side. So this is the AC master, it's 50 amps. And then there's the water heater, the outlets, the microwave, the ice maker, and the wash machine. So the washer breaker's bad and we don't have a washer. So if you plug a heater into the plug for the washer and you plug in one for the outlet, it'll kick that 50 amp breaker. And up here is an AC voltmeter. So right now, the utility heaters running is pulling like 13, 14 amps. So if you had two utility heaters running, it shouldn't kick this 50 amp breaker, but it's wearing out. This, they're old. They're old Mitsubishi breakers from 1984. They're wearing out. And I don't think you can get new ones anymore. I don't think you can but you might be able to find them used on eBay. So it's, it's weird that they only gave me 20 amps for all these plugs or 50 amps. But I think one of the reasons why when it comes to boats, they're trying to keep the voltage down for galvanic corrosion i think i'm not for sure but some of the stuff they've done like back in 84 with the plugs is dangerous let me show you one of the problems so you know it's a nice it's this is saturday and we're just kind of chilling out and every week we buy one of these and this is like 40 bucks and it has it's five amps it's it's a 20 amp plug because that breaker over there is 20 amps so you want to have 20 amp plug too and then this is 5 amps usually they're like 3.2 amps this is a little bit stronger so this will charge up your laptops and maybe your um, your uh, iPads they need a little bit more juice so but these like I said these are 40 bucks a piece so we buy one of these and, and new switches so on the 
back when the this is the switch that the switch is a good switch but this do you see how that's connected there is no box there's no box here this was just slid right into the the this is three quarter plywood no box this was setting right there on that wood super dangerous same thing with the old plug that used to set in there no box so i'm going to put regular household boxes cut holes and make it right make it right and then put these like that and upgrade it from these old mahogany ones and i think if you bought a new boat like this these are the type of covers and stuff you're going to get on the newer boats so like you went and bought a brand new amel or a brand new swan it's i don't think they're still using mahogany plates and things like that but so that's an upgrade so all of them there's like 10 or 15 of them that all have to be done and then you like some and maybe some of these switches you can buy switches like these that look like this that are stain uh chrome or or polished stainless steel and some of these switches will get changed to new updated ones that are a little bit more more shinier so and we'll just buy one every week and by the end of the year by doing it at all that's 52 weeks in a year you do one little thing every week on top of all the other stuff you're doing it adds up it adds up and it's, it just makes the boat safer because if anything's going to burn this boat down I would put my money on that scenario right there on those plugs. tradition of making tacos in Kansas City and there was a place called Arts that makes taco shells real thin and he learned how to do it from his uncle that was named Molinos but he's long gone so he's carried on the tradition and our whole family carries on this tradition on how to make these type of tacos so if you're making the bean type you can't use refried beans you have to take the bean, a black bean, or most people use a red bean. And then you take them and you rinse them off in this, you rinse them off. Until you get all the whatever from the can in them. And then you just slightly squish them in a bowl. So let me find a bowl. And you just take your hand. And you just squish them lightly. Because when you're frying the frying them in the shell, because we're gonna fry these tacos in the shell in grease. You don't want the, the beans to come apart and get into the grease. So you don't want to really go too much on trying to like puree the beans and have them all creamy. So the truly, the trick to this is heat. The skillets these days really don't get hot enough 
if you find some old skills like at a thrift store from the 60s or 70s, those are the kind of electric skillets you would want to use. So the first step is you, these tortilla shells are, they're yellow corn tortillas. Those are what you want to look for. And the thinner, the better. When you, if you, if you get the ones that are thick and yellow or white and yellow, that's not, it's not going to work. It's hard. The only ones that I know of that really, really are a traditional one for our families is one called, what is it, Little Guys? Little yeah, guy. there's a Little Guys in Kansas City that you can get. And then there's Molinos, not Molinos, but Arts. And you can still get taco shells that are this style. So the first step is you just take your bean and you put it into a ball and you set and you just put them in all the tacos. And you, you see how the bean's still kind of whole in there. And you just, and we're gonna do a dozen. And you just kind of put them in. And now my grandmother, she used to take these shells and she would dip them in oil. And that way when you folded them over, you were less likely to break the shell when, when you were sticking them in there to cook. But I've, I've always skipped that and, and I don't do it. So one can, small can, gets you about a dozen. So you just fold it up and drop it in there and kind of float around the bottom to soften it up and then just lay it on its side. And this is the part where you want to get it done. You want to get them all in there for they'll all cook evenly at the same time when you start flipping them over. Now this is not a healthy food. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all can tell by the way I look. And we're using the, if you use peanut oil and if nobody's allergic to it, that's probably the best oil to use because you can get more tacos made. So if you're making, because when our family gets together, we'll make 10, 12, 15, 16 dozen of these shells. And then all the kids will see who can eat the most and I think you know you you can I can eat a dozen maybe what 18 of these things sometimes we did 80 dozen one time so there so you're just gonna sit there and let these cook and you want them super crispy the longer you can make these cook without burning them the better and that way when you bite into them they're crunchy so this is the issue with looking for these shells. You have to get specific shells or they're just gonna to be tough. That's why when you get them from Arts, they cook fast and they just thin and crunchy and easy to cut. Now once you get these all cooked up, you're gonna hit them with salt as they're hot. So don't be afraid to flip these back and forth. It's not gonna hurt anything. And you see how, how golden brown these are starting to become? And then as you're in, as they're sitting there, just sprinkle a little salt. My salt's kind of moist because it's in a damn sailboat, so I can't sprinkle it as good as I want. But, so go ahead and hit the taco with a little bit of salt and then when you drain it pick them up and lightly let those that grease come out of this inside of that shell and set them up like that and if and that way so like if you used if you would have used pureed refried beans when you go like this it the beans would just come coming would just come, see how those beans are dropping out they it would just come out like a liquid so you can't use refried beans so there's a dozen one dozen and we're cooking up some hamburger so you just cook up loose hamburger and you stuff the shells with ground hamburger and you have to be careful when you do the hamburger because that hamburger pops. 
and the grease will splatter up on you, so you gotta be a lot careful. And then the, the other tip to making these is once you get them in, you put them in the oven somewhere, I can't remember the exact temperature, somewhere between 200 and 275. And as you make them, you store them in that temperature in the oven and then pull them out and everybody eats. So if you're ever in Kansas City, go down to Kansas Avenue, it's a place called Arts. They have the stuffed specialty taco meat that's kind of like a pate kind of stuff that you stuff these shells with. Best tacos you ever had.